did you know there's no standards or best practices out there for how to structure your folders to organize pictures? Join me now and I'm going to share with you my best practices. Hi, I'm Molly Bartelt. I own Pixology, where we have organized millions of print and digital pictures for our clients over the past 12 years. We've learned a few things along the way, including developing a system for organizing pictures. If you need a system or a plan, watch this video about turning your photos into a legacy. All right, that would be a great start. And part of this system is having a good solid folder structure. Now the idea for this video came from one of my workshop clients, Mary. I can't even believe I never thought of this before, but she emailed me ahead of the workshop and she's like, I want to know the best practices and standards for folder structure. And that is why we are watching this video here now. This is Molly's folder organization standards and best practices. You want to be set up for success with your folders. And the first thing that is really so, so, so important is this. You need to know your folder structure all the way back to your computer's hard drive. When we're organizing pictures on our computer, sometimes it's not clear what's being saved where, and you have to understand what is being saved where on your computer. So on a PC, it's your C drive. You might find this under My PC, the C drive. And on a Mac, it's called the Macintosh HD hard drive. And on the right here, you can see that I have my user folder, Molly Bartelt, on my Mac. It's in my user folder on my hard drive. And I'll explain this for people using PCs in a second. The OneDrive folder here is something that people kind of get tripped up on. And... Uh, it's kind of funny. <laughs> so let me just show you how this works. Now on the left hand side, it's my user folder. Here's my OneDrive folder. I can see clearly where it is being saved on my computer. And if you don't have this path bar in your finder, you'll go to finder preferences or settings and then show path bar. So here it is. My OneDrive folder is right on my Mac hard drive. On the right hand side, you could see my pictures folder, which is in my OneDrive folder. I don't really store anything there, but it's, it's there because when OneDrive is installed on your computer, whether it's a PC or a Mac, it puts folders in for you. Notice now that in my path bar, the hard drive disappeared. Like I wouldn't know that there's a OneDrive folder on my hard drive. And if you look back, the OneDrive folder on the left-hand side says alias. So we know there is some shenanigans going on there. Microsoft is just really good about kind of making it difficult to know exactly where your pictures or whatever files are being stored. All right, so that's Mac. Let's look at a PC. And this is Windows 11, so I just, uh, if you're using Windows 10, at some point you're going to need to move over. Windows 10 is going away. Here we are, the path bar is at the top. So this PC, local C drive, users and Molly, <laughs> without the E, you, um, Windows kind of truncates the folder name it to five letters for some reason. So we're in my user folder and you can see my my folders over here. Again, I have a OneDrive folder. I am super careful with OneDrive because many of you will know <laughs> you start not knowing what's being saved where, which is the whole reason for this best practice, knowing where your folders are on your computer. So here's the point. I am going to open the OneDrive and bring it brings up this screen. So now look across the top. What appears here can vary depending on how updated your computer is, how you set it up originally. Uh, sometimes I see backup now which is really turning on OneDrive, and you have to be careful about that. 
But the point is, we're still in a folder on my hard drive. It's the users, it's Molly, it's OneDrive, and now we're looking in my pictures folder. You can know what is being stored on your computer with OneDrive because there's a check. If there's a check with a green mark, that means it's being stored on your computer. If there is a cloud, that means you can kind of view it, but it's stored up in the cloud and you have to click on it to get it to download to your computer. So this is one, OneDrive is just one of the reasons why you need to know what is being saved where and you need to be comfortable working with the path and viewing where pictures are. The next best practice standard that I have is when you're working on cleaning up your photos, you need to have at least two main top level folders, a photos to organize folder. And then I have a photo estate folder here. Essentially, it's your master folder where you are going to save everything that's cleaned up, like you're done deduplicating and all of that, okay? So you're going to have a master folder. I happen to call it a photo estate folder because that's what we do at Pixology is we create photo estates for people. It's all the meaningful photos, videos, you know, PDF documents that are important to telling your family's story. That's what goes in the photo estate. It's clean, okay? Then a couple optional folders are scanned photos and project folders. These are a couple special folders. If you have scanned photos, they kind of function, or I work with them differently than I do the regular digital pictures. So I might put any scanned photos I find in here or the pictures that I'm going to scan. And projects, Often when you have lots and lots of folders that have accumulated over the years, you might have specific project folders. Like my son graduated from high school last year and I had a poster uh, folder so I could put all the pictures in there that I wanted to make a collage for. That Alex poster folder is in the projects folder because I know that I have all of the original pictures saved in the photo estate folder here. If you're not sure if a project folder, you have the pictures somewhere else, then you're gonna put them in photos to organize until you figure it out. Next, we want to organize folders chronologically. That is for sure a best practice of mine. I cannot imagine organizing pictures another way and that's what I advise. Now, if you have a different method, I'd love to know it. Put it in the comments below. So let's talk about this. When we organize folders chronologically, there's less thinking to sort pictures. You just go by the date. Also gonna be easier to compare and delete duplicates down the line. And the naming formula that I'm gonna share with you brings super neat organization. So you can see on the right hand side here, I've got the year first in the first batch of folders. And then I have a couple albums that are like topic based and inside I might have year folders in there. And then I have a couple odd ones at the bottom that have a Z in front of them. I just put the Z in front of these because these are really important um, folders to me. They're like all my kids um, baby book and memorabilia and whatnot. And I kind of pulled out that which applies to them versus, you know, like their, their school stuff and things like that go in there. Um, but the rest of our family photos are organized chronologically. And I have a top level view of the folders here. Not a lot to scroll through. Now let's talk about the naming formula, okay? This is it, it's for folders. Four digits for the year, two digits for the month, two digits for the date and a description. And it can be any variation of that. So let's just go back and look here. You can see I have um, you know, a decade and then I have a specific trip here that occurred in 2019. I don't even add a month because I think it's, I'll remember what month and, and I keep it out of the 2010s because it was such a, a life-changing event. 
also when you have a span of photos you can just use 1996 to 1999 you're always putting the date first the folders are going to organize chronologically with ease so that's a big a big formula a big best practice this formula I have seen other um, other photo organizers using and it's really a good a good one to follow I even had a gentleman in India who spoke with me he was a, a software programmer and he's like I cannot figure out my folders and when I shared this formula with him he was like oh my gosh <laughs> that was amazing. The I actually advised a web developer in India on how to organize his pictures by renaming folders. This is a really key best practice. Okay. Now, obviously, if you have one-off folders and things like that, you know, I'm not like religiously sticking to this, but 99% of my albums probably have a date in front of them. Now, this is a related best practice, but we are gonna create a folder structure that has nested folders. You're gonna have decades at the top, and then the years will be in the decades, and then the months will be in the years. So here we are, I'm gonna just point out, um, this is my Macintosh hard drive, so I know exactly where my photos are being saved. If we go along here, here's my photo estate folder, and my decade folder is the 2020s photos. Okay, and inside it, I have years, and here I have 2022 expanded, so you can see all of the month folders in there and a special event. If you have travel or like, you know, something really important like a wedding, um, I would keep that out so that you could see it right off the bat. You know, that was one of the big parts of the year. And then 2023, I haven't moved my 2024 folder in here because I'm in denial that it's 2025 yet. So that the idea is, is that you have decades, years, and months. And the reason for this is you do not want to scroll through hundreds of folders. I literally <laughs> have seen people have like 750 folders in one folder and that's completely unmanageable. You're scrolling forever. You, you really need to nest your folders so that you can click, click, get to what you want with ease. So, Remember how I told you you want to have a photos to organize folder and a photo estate folder? Photos to organize folder. You can't see the name of it because it's squished, but this is photos to organize folder. I have my folders listed in there by source. And then in each source, I have them listed by year. So you can see I have the 2014 photos in here and I have to clean up my husband's Google photos. When you can open two windows up and you can compare, it's just so easy. So if I wanted, I could open up the 2014 folder here, which is in the 2010s, and I can compare back and forth. So uh, that nested structure helps you compare pictures eventually as well. I don't know if I would call this a standard or a best practice, but this is the organizing steps that we use for digital pictures. We teach to gather all your digital photos to one place, the photos to organize folder. And hopefully your computer has enough storage. I always recommend a terabyte of hard drive and 16 megabytes of RAM so that your computer can keep up with you. You are gonna copy photos from devices. You're gonna move photos from other places on your computer. You will download photos from Google or Dropbox or Amazon. And you may need to export pictures from a program to get them to the photos to organize folder. Once you're, you know, you've got your sources of photos in there, you're gonna work source by source and clean the folders up. So you'll rename your folders with our formula. You'll move photos into the properly dated folders and you will create the folder structure with decades, years, and months or some categories. You then will use a deduplicating program. 
Uh, we recommend Duplicate Photos Fixer Pro for a PC or Photo Sweeper for a Mac. And then you can compare small batches like the 2014 folder to the 2014 folder in a different source. It just makes it so easy to see the results in the duplicate finder. Then the fourth step is when a folder is cleaned up, you're gonna move it to the photo estate folder. That's what it says down there. You're gonna move it to the photo estate folder. Now this is like condensed. <laughs> it's a, in a nutshell, the four steps. There's a lot more that goes into this because there's a lot of moving parts between the online places we have pictures and more. So I'm just trying to giving you like the highlight, the overview of the steps. Now, remember it's gonna be a work in progress. It's gonna take a while. So here we have my actual um, photos to organize folder with you know the different sources that I need to work on. And then my photo estate is on the right hand side. It's a work in progress, right? This is not gonna be resolved you know, in a weekend. Organizing your digital pictures, it takes some time. And that's why we have the PIX plan. It's a um, online program where you can get the education. You know, what I gave you here for the folder structure, the standards, the best practices, is just you know a highlight overview, like I said. In the PIX plan, you'll get the full course as well as a community where we have weekly support calls and um, we have two times a month workshops for three hours where people work on their projects on their computers and they ask questions. If you need some help, some tech support, an advocate, I'd love to talk with you. Uh, you can schedule a call by clicking uh, my calendar down below, or you can learn more about the PIX plan by just going to the website. I have a question for you. What did you think of these best practices and standards of mine? Put a comment below if you think I should add something else. I'd love to hear it. If you're a Windows you know, File Explorer user, you're gonna wanna watch that video next to see about organizing pictures with your PC. All right, take care, we'll see you the next time.